If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a like it. Okay, so now that I've introduced you a little bit into adjustment layers, let's work with another type of adjustment layer, which would be a black and white adjustment layer. Now this image has a lot of color contrast, right? We have this really warm orange colored Volkswagen against the blue and green background. So it really separates itself and makes it for an interesting image. Now, when you think about black and white, since you've already had some introduction to the hue saturation adjustment layer, so that maybe I can just go to the hue and saturation layer and drag the saturation to negative 100. But notice it's kind of flat now, like it, that now with the color removed, which was giving us a lot of color contrast and complementary colors, this Volkswagen is now just kind of a similar gray as this background. So desaturating an image sometimes is not the best way. And actually I would suggest most times it's not the best way. You lose all control of being able to manipulate the individual colors themselves to affect the local subject color contrast. Because right now, this is it. This is all I can do. I mean, I can go up to my brightness and contrast and add that on top and say, I just need more contrast. But based on where the tones fall in the Volkswagen, it's making the Volkswagen darker. So maybe if I make it brighter, okay, now it's this fender is blending in with this. This is now getting too bright up here. It's still not giving me that effect that I want. So what I'm going to do is hold the shift key and select the other layer and just click the trash can icon. And it's going to say, do you want to delete the selected layers? And I'll say, yes. All right. So then what do we do? This is a perfect time to apply a black and white adjustment layer, which is right here. Now, when you go down the properties panel, it, I mean, it looks very much like the desaturated version, but notice I get all of these control. And remember, you can hover in between the properties panel and that layers panel, get the up and down arrow, and then drag down until you, you're sure you see all the different adjustments. This was orange, wasn't it? Well, it means it's got a little red in it. So if I bring the red slider up, ooh, look at that. Makes it brighter. If I bring it down, it makes it dark. So I have control over just the Volkswagen, which is what I want. So I think I want to make this a bit brighter. Let's see the yellow slider. So that makes it dark also. So red and yellow is an orange. So now I can make that Volkswagen kind of as, as bright as I want pretty easily without having to select it with complicated selections, without having to do a lot of dodging and burning, which are other options and tools that I have. This is a very quick way to control the, the density of the image. Now, what if the greens, which will, I can make those a little darker if I want them to be more of a graphic element where there's not a lot of shadow detail. How about the blues? Now, here's the interesting thing. Watch when I go really far on the blues to crank it down. The blue channel is the shortest wavelength. It's typically starved for light. And you see that whenever you try to make something bright, really dark, it shows you it doesn't have enough pixel information to make that blue sky beautiful all the way across if you do a lot of dramatic editing. So I've got to kind of pull that up until I don't see that. How about the cyan? How far can I pull that down until I start to see it? Do you see all that problem in the sky? That's pretty much bad, unless you're going for a more artistic interpretation and that pixelation, uh, the artifacting, all of this noise problem, posterization problem. If it's an effect you want, then it's okay. But I want my sky to look more like a photorealistic sky. So that's really as dark as I can go with, with this color channel adjustment. So I'm gonna leave it there. Now, based on the other things that I've learned, I would like to make this grass a little lighter. So maybe I'll go ahead and take what I've already learned and I would add a levels adjustment layer and I would say make that grass a little brighter, but maybe with a little bit more black, something like that. Now I'm only looking at this foreground right over here. Remember the rule. This makes every single thing for every layer have that same adjustment. So what I can do is I can grab this adjustment, click on it and drag it down. So now it's only affecting the car itself, not the black and white conversion. But if I want to further reduce this impact, I just need to convert this layer mask to black. Because remember, a white mask reveals, a black mask conceals. I'm going to select this mask, and then I'm going to go to the properties panel and just click the word invert. And see that removed, that hid all of this effect. But now I know I can just hit B for the brush, hit D for default colors to switch my foreground background. Ultimately, I just need white in my foreground if I'm painting on a black mask. I'll look at my options bar, make sure I have a normal blend mode. My opacity is set at 40% because that's what I used the last time I used it, which is fine for this, I think. And now I can just paint. I'm painting on the mask. You see how it showed up on this mask over here? I'll hold the alt or option key and click on the mask. See, that's what it just did. Click on the eyeball. So anything I want lighter, I click and paint. Click and paint just to drive the viewer's eye a little bit, just to give a balance of tones in the image. Maybe I want that door a little lighter. So remember, photography is about subtlety. So any tool you can learn to make your image exactly the way you want it, the responsibility is on you to learn those tools.
I hope this has helped. And once you get to this point where you have your favorite black and white, which is exactly where I want you to take this particular image. Imagine if you wanted to make it a sepia toned image, which is like an old timey kind of a warmish brown. Just make sure you're at the very top of all your layers then go up and add a hue saturation adjustment layer. Click colorize in the properties panel and just drag the hue over to somewhere to a really warm brown, like not a yellowy green brown, but more of an orangey brownish brown, and then pull your saturation down. I like mine to be pretty low, somewhere between 10 and 15, because I like it to be real subtle. I think that just looks like a nice old timey photograph. It fits very well with this particular image. Now let's say you had five of these or 500 that you wanted to show on your website or you wanted to put in your Instagram post. The key is you have a certain number of images that you want to look like they're all toned the same way so that one's not too warm, one's not too red, one's not too dark. Let's say I have this wedding image and I want the exact sepia tone I've created here. All you have to do is come over to the right side of the hue saturation name or whatever name you name this layer and then click with your cursor and drag over. Do you see how my, my hand, my cursor changed into a closed fist? because it's literally holding on to that hue saturation layer. I'm holding my mouse down while I hover over the tab of the other image, and then I'm coming down inside that image and letting go. And notice what it did. It automatically applied the hue saturation layer to the document. It applied the exact same settings I had already applied, and I can do this to any number of images and they will all match. They will all look like they were tinted the same way. I hope you found that to be an interesting tip. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.